Well, the Omicron variant has prompted a rapid response around the world, but is it the right response? So much is still unknown about this variant. Dr. Peter Uni is an epidemiologist and the scientific director of Ontario's COVID-19 science advisory table. He's with me now. Uh, Dr. Uni, thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Look, uh, how concerned should we be uh, about the Omicron variant? Oh, I think we need to take it very seriously. No, this thing has rapidly taken over South Africa and is about to take over the world. You know, when you think about the situation we were in when Delta was taking over, it took Delta roughly three months to take over South Africa and also Ontario. And uh, this variant now uh, took just uh, three weeks, three to four weeks. So it is really fast and it's clear this is not a blip. And it's probably a combination of increased transmissibility and the capacity to evade the immune system that uh, makes a difference here. Right. Uh, what should guide the way we respond to it? So first of all, you know, surveillance is really important and really then just tracking down all people who are just at risk during the last three weeks who were at risk actually to uh, introduce this variant into the province. What we see is based on a really excellent genomic testing here that uh, everything back to about um, 12 days was just negative. So we don't have any evidence that until 12 days ago there was a case identified in the province which was uh, Omicron. Mm. And and uh, what we just now need just to make sure is, you know, that in collaboration with the feds that we really just are able to identify as many people as possible who were in African countries. The point now is, you know, we know that already from growth curves modeled that roughly around 10th of November, there was already probably 20 percent of the cases in South Africa that were caused by Omicron, oh. meaning this thing has had time to spread first, you know, also across the continent. But we also then need to be aware of it's not coincidental that we identify cases from Nigeria, Egypt, etc. It's just all over the place and probably in Africa already. Only they don't, the poorer countries don't have any surveillance systems. So we just have a blind flight there. Okay. Uh, how long will it be? Uh, you talked about transmissibility and, and infection and so on. How long will it be before we know uh, whether existing vaccines are going to be effective and will be effective against this new variant? Well, what is based on, 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 you know, what we know right now regarding the mutations, what is relatively probable is that there will be some evasion of the immune system. And it's irrespective of whether you are immune because you were vaccinated or infected. It's the same story, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We don't know the extent of it. For that, we need the uh, lab research. And probably in about two to three weeks, we will know more. We will also know more in about perhaps a week or so, 10 days, regarding the risk of hospital admissions and ICU admissions in those vaccinated as compared to those who are not vaccinated and infected. So I would expect that two weeks from now we have a lot more information. Obviously we can't wait and obviously it's very clear this thing is more transmissible and it has an edge over Delta. Therefore we need to react swiftly. All right, we've talked, we, we've seen there's action about uh, considering more testing. There's, uh, you know, uh, restricting flights from uh, uh, these seven uh, countries in southern Africa. Uh, do you think it's inevitable that in, in the province of Ontario, but uh, across Canada, we're going back to more restrictions and, and more public health orders uh, like we've seen in the past? We will see how this goes. This will be a challenge. You know, what I said in the past that there won't be any more, uh, you know, uh, you know, going back with a really relevant restric restrictions that are perceivable. Of course, we need to now revise that and see how it goes. What is important to realize is, you know, we were very early with Delta in Ontario because we're so well connected to the world and we were able to pull it off with Delta. We were first in class for that variant. Now, this one is more challenging, mm -hmm. but if we now would revert back to where we were before Thanksgiving with our behavior, this would already ha help quite a bit. And then, you know, the point will be to find out whether we're able just to have smaller sort of solutions, meaning more people working from home again, you know, just cutting down a little bit on your social activities and dinner parties, etc. Being more stringent with masking, good masks, well-fitted masks, better with ventilation, being really disciplined, you know, that vaccine certificates are well implemented, all of that helps. And we need to be aware of that. In the past, we were very successful because we kept the right attitude. And we now just need to become a little bit more disciplined and need to take that very seriously. All right, a couple of quick questions to finish here. Uh, what about boosters? Should we accelerate the process for providing boosters? 
Yeah, probably. So one of the challenges right now is we have a lot of people in the province who are eligible who didn't get their boosters yet, which worries me, honestly. We need this. We need to look at this vaccine as a three-dose vaccine, at least for people my age or older. I'm 55, uh, 54. So so that's important. And then in addition, of course, just get even more and more people, especially, you know, uh, um, a racialized communities really just to understand how important it is to protect themselves now. That's important too. And vaccinate our kids. So third doses help and all the other vaccine doses help as well. We just need to get the optimal immunity for the population mm. now. Uh, this, of course, uh, uh, fuels the debate over travel bans uh, because they've been implemented again and t targeting one or more countries or one region. Yeah. Is a travel ban the right response? Look, uh, there is no consensus on the effectiveness of, of uh, travel bans. I think where there is scientific consensus is on the effectiveness on at that stage that we are right now uh, to, uh, to really control the borders well. What does this mean? It means a really stringent testing regimen plus quarantining irrespective of uh, the vaccine status probably uh, just uh, now at least for all the high-risk countries. And the definition of high-risk country, you know, that will be uh, an open discussion, obviously. It's probably more than just the countries we're talking about. A travel ban in addition to that, whether this is actually just have any, having any effect or not, that's not clear. We need to be aware of that right now. We're always a step behind. Even when we were very early now, you know, just with uh, having identified this variant thanks to South African colleagues very early, we still are one step behind. And you will see, you know, all these little uh, mushrooms just uh, popping up everywhere in the world, including more here in Ontario. The reasons that we're so early now is that we just have a good surveillance system. All right, Dr. Peter Uni, uh, thanks for your perspective again today. Uh, lots to watch for and uh, more answers uh, we are still waiting for, but uh, thanks for your, uh, uh, your perspective today. Appreciate it. You're very welcome.